So here's the tricky part and maybe the potato head part. You gotta have sun for this to work. And I can't believe I said that. Even a potato head can do this. Hey guys, I'm gonna walk you through a cheapest dirt, do it yourself, solar power station setup. And a couple options you can go to, uh, and I'll get into that right now real quick. So you can go with a Pecron or like a power station that you buy a Blue Eddy or whatever, or use a lithium battery. This is a great option, I think, and I'm gonna show you what you can do with this. Again, you can just buy a power station, but this for me is gonna work better. It's way lighter too, and I'm, I'm trying to keep everything light. That power station is about a thousand bucks. It cranks out, I think, 1,980 watt hours, and it weighs 50 pounds. They're hogs. This guy's uh, cranking out 1,280 watt hours, and it's, it's, not, it's maybe a third that. It's not heavy at all. I don't know what this thing is. These look like car batteries, uh, but they don't weigh like car batteries. Unlike a car battery, you can run this thing down to zero and crank it right back up, so you have the full capacity. Um, you know, with a car battery setup, you can only run it down to maybe 50%, 40%. You don't want to kill it, drain it right down, or, or it screws the battery up. Not these. This is the route I'm going, and there's reasons for that. Um, not only because it's cheaper, but for me, in the setup I'm gonna be running, it's, I think it's gonna be better. We're not gonna send this to the moon. I'm gonna make this quick and painless. So this guy comes in at around 279 Canadian. That's about 200 bucks American. That's cheap as dirt. This is a Vatrer, I don't know how you say it. V-A-T-R-E-R, Vatrer, lithium battery. This is 12.8 volts, 100 amp hours. 12.8 uh, by 100, you get 1,280 watt hours. So that's how you, you rock that stuff. So this battery comes with an app. You can check that out. It shows you what's happening with that battery. So I wanted to keep it cheap as dirt. And with that theme, I bought an Amazon Basics power inverter. This was under 100 bucks and it's 1,000 watts. Awesome reviews, so I've got no issues running this thing. Um, and again, I wanted to keep it cheap. So 1,000 watts, this is all I need. I'm not gonna be running TVs and stereos and uh, full kitchens. I'm gonna be powering a laptop, running some LED lights, charging batteries. So this works great with the one battery. I'm also gonna test it out with this nasty thing I bought. This is like 15 bucks, little cooktop. There's a couple different solar panel options you can use. You can use the fold-up type, which I have. Uh, and I'm gonna use that, but for something different. Or this guy here, this panel I bought for, I think it was 75 bucks Canadian. So it's like 50 bucks, I think US. And that is 100 watts. So this stuff has really come down, man. Like you can get into this stuff really cheaply now. So we're gonna tie that up into the system. I'll put it all together, show you what other stuff you're gonna need. And again, you don't need a lot. I also bought the cheapest charge control I could find. This one runs about 15 bucks Canadian, about 10 bucks American. This is kind of an old school charge controller. I'll get into that a little later. So this is another cool option for you as well. This is a battery box, no big deal. If you have a boat, you probably know what this is. But this one's kind of tricked out. It's got a couple extras on it that I'll show you. This is the layout, guys. This is how it works. So this inverter is taking power from the battery. So you can put this, of course, anywhere you like, but this hooks up directly to the battery. Amazon Basics gives you the proper gauge wiring to do that. They also give you an extended off on switch, which is awesome. So the battery gets hooked up to the charge controller. So this charge controller is controlling the juice coming in to this battery from that panel. Solar panel coming in to the charge controller, coming in to charge the battery, and then from the battery out to the inverter. So there is the positive hooked up, and I'm just gonna cinch it up. There's positive. Let's get negative on there. So that's that, and now we're gonna pop in the positive side first. Cinch those two up, put the little cap on it. Okay, so that guy's ready to go, and this will have power now, obviously. So I've hooked up this extended off on switch, which is an awesome option. That's pretty cool. And of course, everything's working. So I can plug in stuff to this, whatever I want. And this battery is gonna run it through this inverter. So that works. But the problem is right now, nothing's charging the battery. So let's get the next two components hooked up and see how this thing works. You gotta have sun for this to work. And I can't believe I said that. Some people don't know that, but you have to have sun for this to work. If you're in some godforsaken hellhole, like let's say Toronto, 
It doesn't work as well as it does out here. But for me, in this part of the world, it works amazing. I'm in one of the sunniest locations in Canada, and I've been testing this stuff out. It's been running in my Overland rig, and I've been using it for my cooler, uh, keeping the meat and the beers cold, and it's been amazing. The next component is the charge controller. This is the charge controller, and it's hooked up to the battery. It's got a positive and negative wire hooking up into the battery. I'm not gonna hook that all up for you. It's pretty simple stuff. You basically plug this in to where there's a little picture of a battery here, and it shows you a positive and negative. You plug it in, and this guy lights up and will tell you how many volts uh, it's, it's got coming from that battery. It'll also show you your panels and any input going on there. And there's a couple other things here I'll show you quick. So here it is. This is the picture of the battery. And there's the positive. It's got the plus and the minus for the negative. And there's my wires going into it. The one on the left here is your solar panel. And it shows a positive here, negative there. That's where you plug your solar panel into. No big deal. The one on the right is like an auxiliary. Um, basically, you can run anything you want off that. It's going to take power directly from the battery. So maybe some LED light strips or whatever you like. I'm not going to go into the menus here. It's pretty simple stuff. Here's the USB plug-in. You can plug in your phone and charge it or whatever you like straight into this charge controller. So when you buy your solar panel, um, the cables coming out of the solar panel will tell you what's positive and negative. These guys aren't color-coded. These are coming out of the solar panel, but they do have little tags on them showing you what's positive and what's negative. These are MC4 clips and check those guys out. These are waterproof connectors. What you got to do when you buy your extension with these MC4 clips, just make sure the colors match um, your positive and negative. Like this one here, this is obviously red, so it's positive, but this is a male and this positive coming out of the solar panel is male, so that's not going to work. Same goes for the negative. So that's not gonna work. So just watch it when you buy your extensions that they work. Here's a female positive and a male negative. That's gonna work, no problem. And these are weather sealed and ready to go. They just snap in like that. So this 10 foot length of solar panel I picked up off Amazon. It's already pre-cut. You just gotta pop these guys off. Now you could just jam these straight into that charge controller. I like to stick these ends on them. It just cleans them up a bit. You can also add some shrink wrap onto these. So there you have it. I got my little connectors on the ends of that bare wire. I'm all plugged in and ready to go. I've already plugged in the negative and there's that little solar panel icon. And now I'm gonna stick the positive in and it just slides in. And you can see, as soon as I do that, it shows a little panel icon here. And it's saying that it's sending power. It's got a little arrow pointing to the battery. I'm gonna cinch that up here. So let's open that app up on my beaten up phone. So it'll show you when it connects, there you go. And now it's gonna give me some info. And I hope you can see that. It's showing my battery, 13.1 volts. Uh, outgoing is 0.0, .0 so nothing going out. Currents or amps and watts, zero going out right there. Uh, if you scroll down lower, you'll get what's coming in. And it's showing an average of uh, 3.274 volts coming in off that panel. Not much going on, it's really overcast. And there's the temp of my battery, and there it shows you your different cells. Okay, let's get this nasty thing going here. So I got this cheap as dirt cooktop. It's pumping out around 700 watts, and I'm gonna get this thing fired up here. But to do so, you've gotta turn on your inverter. And that kicks on, and now it's on minimum. I think I'll go to max just to see what this thing's gonna do to my battery. Hope you can see that. We're pulling out Looks like 750 watts-ish right there. You can see it's already gone down by one percentage point. Okay, let's get cooking. So I'm gonna just try this out. I'm gonna fry up a couple eggs here. Obviously, if you're boiling water or something else, that's gonna take a lot more juice out of this thing if you got this thing cranked on, on maximum. Um, with eggs, I'm probably gonna go medium heat. We're into this for about a minute or so, and we're down to 69. Drop this down to medium. That one is gonna taste a little bit like the garage. Oh yeah, baby. All right, ready to go. 
Turn that off. We had that going for about four or five minutes and it's at 63%, no big deal. So really this thing's gonna last a long time. I mean, we only started at 71%, so not even 10%. Beauty, we got a sun shower. Finally, the sun is coming through. Got sun on it. All right, let's take a look at this panel here. I've had sun here for a couple hours now. It's late in the afternoon, though it's actually almost 7 p.m. Um, so it's not the best time to be sucking up the solar energies from the sun. But what turned me over to this whole solar thing and made me really interested in it was the Ninji Camper. Uh, I did some tests with this thing and just the cooler alone um, was awesome to have that running off a battery. There's 200 watts on the roof. We have an option of 400 watts. I got a 2000 watt inverter inside, but I ran this thing. It's got a little cooler. It's about this big. And I ran it full of beer and just did some test runs with it. Rain for two straight day days. So zero solar and two straight nights, like the night before and the, the night after. Um, and this thing was down to around 40, 50%, I think. And literally the end of the next day, sun was out and I'm not thinking about it, positioning this anyway. Um, it was charged right back up. So with zero maintenance, this thing was charging, keeping that, keeping the meat and the beer cold. So that to me is awesome. That to me is enough to buy solar or to get into solar. Um, another thing is of course, you're charging laptops, doing all the rest of the stuff. Cooking, I'm not huge. I'm not gonna be cooking much, I don't think inside there, but uh, it's a good option to put a little uh, cooktop on there and away you go. So it's definitely cool. It's definitely uh, awesome. This one we're playing with today, it's only 100 watts. Um, you can easily put a Y um, connector to it and have two of them or three of them or four of them. Um, and, and this thing would absolutely kick butt. So with the one panel we got going right now, I'm gonna show you what we're at. And we've been about two hours of kind of mostly sun, but some mixed cloud. And again, late in the afternoon, let's take a look. As I mentioned earlier, the charge controller thing, you can upgrade easily. This is an old school unit. This is a PWM charge controller. That stands for pulse width modulation. You can get into a newer, a more efficient um, charge controller, an MPPT, maximum power point tracking. That's the one you want. It's gonna give you the most bang for your buck, I think. You're gonna suck the most solar juices you can out of that one, although this will work. And I did wanna show you the cheapest one possible. I'm gonna show you this battery box here. This is a standard battery box, except it's got a few uh, extras on it. You stick your battery in there and you hook it up and then it's giving power to these USB cigarette lighter plug in there. These guys here and you got these clips connectors. You can add more clips and connectors to it. You can add wires to it. You can do whatever you want to it. But what's cool about it is once the battery's in there, you can add maybe a solar panel to this section quick disconnect and it's undone. Um, you can add some lighting to this one, quick disconnect, it's undone, or this one goes to a panel. Um, if you wanna charge this unit while it's in place, you can use these to charge the battery or maybe you can tie in your charge controller to this instead. So this is a very cool option. I'm gonna show this in way more detail here um, when I hook it up to another Overland build I'm doing, um, probably in a couple months. So I'll show you that, but this is a great option and it's light. It turns that cheap lithium battery into a, a uh, a power station ultimately and you plug it in and customize it as you like great option at about a hundred bucks on amazon i'll put a link to that in the description below grab some connectors and uh, do what you want to do let's open this app up and take a look so here we are it's 68 percent and it's been exactly about two hours if i had 200 or 200 watt panels on there that would make it even more awesome but it's pretty cool. Definitely, definitely if you're gonna run a cooler, it's an awesome option. And of course, all the other benefits of it. It's just, uh, it's an easy deal for sure. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.